All right, let's go. I had no idea that when I pressed this button, I'd become almost insane within the next 24 hours. It's been a long time since I sat down and played through Terraria, so I thought, why not do it in one go? That would be a good idea. And so I spent the following day trying to complete the game in one long playthrough, and it was worth it. Oh my God. What the f No! Probably wasn't worth it. But I had a question. Can I beat the game in this time limit? And was Terraria still as fun as I remember it being? Well, let's find out. This is me playing Terraria for 24 hours straight. I loaded it and started the same old ritual of mindlessly chopping down trees before heading over to the right of the world. It was a pleasant walk taking in the beautiful environment around me until I reached the jungle biome. There I was walking through and some bats came and attacked me. They were tough but I wasn't going to let that slide. This, this was going to be a long day. Clearly I was in need of a little house to hide away from my enemies, unlike the real world where I'm a tough, strong individual. So being the pro Terraria player that I am, I built a small box. To make myself feel more protected, I head over to the Crimson Biome and chop down some trees. This shade wood armor would give me a little boost and hey, that outfit is magnificent. Terraria is a game that's about building, but it's also about mining. So I ventured down into the darkest depths looking for some shiny stuff. I went through the mushroom biome, I gathered ore, I got myself a shrew minecart. My luck couldn't have got any better until it did. Somehow the stars aligned, the terrarium gods looked down upon me and said, James, you are completely dog shit at this game and you're gonna need all the help you can get. And bang, just like that, I strolled into an enchanted shrine and I got myself an enchanted sword, which was pretty good to be fair. Now, as I mentioned, I I'm a pro at this game. There's not a single person on this planet that's better than me at terraria. Yeah. I used some of the ore that I gathered to make some silver tools and I went over to expand this box of mine. Did it make it look any better? No, no it didn't. I added a room underneath to start storing some of the items that I was gathering. This was built to be a temporary solution but I, I just never stopped using it. Now, seeing as my first mining trip went so well, I decided to head back down and gather up a little more loot. While down there, I found a couple of gravitational potions. So when I got home, I equipped them and shot up for the stars. Now looking at my screen flipping up and down almost sent me into a f***ing seizure. But luckily for me, it didn't. And soon enough, I found myself a sky island. Here, I got myself a lucky horseshoe, which means I wouldn't die to fall damage. If you're a player that does die to fall damage, then you suck. Floating around a little more, I found another island and I got myself a lovely big red balloon. Oh, and I might have found a star fury, but pfft. Who cares about that? This house I constructed was hideous. Every time I walked past it, my eyes hurt. So what did I do? Well, I, I extended it. And now it takes up even more of the screen. So yeah, go me. Now we've discovered Terraria is about mining and building, but it's also about fighting big eyeballs. To do that, I needed to build myself a little arena. <laughs> Yeah, that'll do. While doing this, Drew decided to show up, which was great, because to fight the Eye of Cthulhu, I initially decided that I wanted to use grenades. And where do you find grenades? Drew, my main man. To do this, it usually takes about 50 to 200 grenades, uh, so, so I bought 916. The moon was rising, I had all my grenades equipped, and it was time to go in and spawn the boss. I fought away, and all was going pretty well, but I soon realised, f*** me, I am I am terrible at throwing grenades. So I switched to my Star Fiori, and slowly but surely, I took him out. And to show off my dominance, I decided to respawn him again, and defeated him for a second time. Now by this point my testosterone levels were at an all time high, so where better to go than the underground jungle? I head down in search for better loot and just to try and get an understanding of where everything was. I came across the bog standard stuff that you find down there, nothing too exciting. I got bored pretty quickly though, so I teleported back to the base and head over to the crimson. Now if you don't remember, about 45 minutes prior to this I absolutely annihilated the Eye of Cthulhu. I sent him to the f***ing back rooms, it was it was mental. But yeah, I did alright so I thought, why not take on the brain of Cthulhu? I set up a little arena and then went to smashing the crimson hearts to spawn him in. Now, I'm going to give you two options and let you guess how this went. Option one, I demolished him like a fat child's Big Mac meal. Or option two, I demolished him like a fat child's Big Mac meal. Yeah, you got it right. This fight went pretty well. Again, to assert my dominance, I respawned him in back for another round and... Yeah, same result. I'm just I'm just too good at this game. What can I say? I got home and I crafted myself some spanking new armour and then equipped my pickaxe and started digging down to hell because I thought I'm going to need to sooner or later.
Once I got down there, I fought off a couple mobs and I even got myself a nice voodoo doll, which pff, can't complain about that. I went back to the base and as I was sorting through my chest, I realised I had a little bit of spare gold. So I thought, hey, I've defeated the Eye of Cthulhu, I've defeated the Brain of Cthulhu, why not take on the King Slime? I went over to a Crimson Altar and crafted the Slime Crown before heading back to my arena. Now I just defeated two bosses which are generally considered a bit harder than the King Slime, so I wasn't really too worried. And yeah, it went fine. I used my sword and chipped away at him until I finally defeated him and I got myself a nice ninja helmet. Now my boss was going pretty well so I thought fuck it why not take on Skeletron. I head over to the dungeon got some platforms out and started building an arena to fight him in. After grabbing a few buff potions I went back over to the dungeon and I spoke to the old man. I called his mum a really nasty name because that's the kind of funny guy that I am. He heard it and got real angry and soon enough Skeletron spawned in. I kept my distance and picked away him switching between my sword and a sapphire staff that I crafted beforehand. Speaking of hands once they were gone the fight was essentially won. We fought on before eventually I could take him out and I had access to the dungeon. I jumped in searched through and managed to get myself a nice cobalt shield. All was going well in, until something awful happened. There I was, fighting away, killing hundreds of innocent baby skeletons before one of them had enough and I had <laughs> both of my kidneys stolen. Not just one as well, both of them. What the fuck? Now as you can imagine, I, I was mortified, distraught, I, I didn't know if I could carry on. I tried to distract myself by extending the garden shed that I called a home but I couldn't get it off my mind. All I wanted was my kidneys back. <sighs> I'd had enough. I stopped building, marched back over to the dungeon, and I was ready to defeat it once and for all. I dropped back in without an ounce of fear in my body. Nothing was going to stop me from looting everything, killing everything, getting everything that I wanted. this game. It then became apparent to me, how was I supposed to make progress when I was still wearing the same armour for three hours prior? I I'm a pro, I don't work under amateur conditions. <laughs> So I dropped into hell with my mind focused on getting a set of molten armor. Now if you don't play Terraria then what, what the fuck are you doing here? But also, Molten Armor is essentially the strongest pre hard mode set, so it was vital that I got some. I spent a long time, and I mean a long time, mining away for this all. And what I said while playing basically sums it up. Why does it drop lava when I mine it? Who the fuck thought that was a good idea? But I eventually had a good amount, and I could craft myself a pair of greaves, a chest plate, and a helmet. But that wasn't enough. I still needed a full set of Molten Tools and a Volcano Sword to add to my collection. So I head back down into hell. Again, this process was rather long, but it allowed me to bridge across, which is going to be useful when I went to face the wall of flesh. I got home and had enough ore to craft everything I needed and I was feeling pretty stacked. But there was one more thing that I wanted. Now, any of you Terraria experts, like myself of course, will know that one of the easiest ways to cheese the big wall of mincemeat is to throw bee nades at it. And where do you find these bee nades? Well, you, you kill the queen bee. I started wandering over to the jungle, but out of nowhere, the goblins started attacking. Pretty rude, but okay. They arrived to take me out, but they don't call me Goblin Slayer 420 for a reason. Wait, wait, no. They don't call me Goblin Slayer 420 for no reason. I wiped the floor with the goblins, and while it didn't really provide me with much loot, it was a great chance to test out my new weapon and armor. Once they were done with, I rushed over and dived right into the jungle. I searched around until I found a beehive, and then I could summon the queen bee. Now this fight went pretty smoothly and by smoothly I mean really smoothly. Like I didn't even have to buff up. It didn't take long before she was defeated and I could craft a few more spawners to farm her for the loot I needed. I then spent a few minutes killing multiple bees and getting all the drops that I was after because f*** the bees and everything they do for the environment. I went home to grab myself some buffs and a guy voodoo doll because it was nearly time to face the wall of flesh. Back down into hell I went and I ran over to the edge of the platform. This was it. All my hard work, all my preparation, it was time to take on the big meaty boy. Well, I'm never saying that again. I dropped the voodoo doll into the lava and soon the wall of flesh approached. Straight away, I whipped out my beanades and started throwing them directly at him. This technique should have been flawless, but yeah, the, the beanades just went through the platform and didn't hit him at all. I had to get a little closer so that I could hit my shots and soon enough, the wall of flesh was defeated and I finally entered hard mode. I was actually really surprised at how fast I could do this. It, it only took me seven hours. I collected my hard earned loot and then went on to smash three crimson altars. Then it was time to mine. I head back down into the depths and started looking for all the palladium that I could find. I popped a splunker potion and mined away. This went well enough, but I had a bit of a problem. Oh my god, whichever fucking donut created the pixel art for Palladium, why is it literally identical to the copper one? Yeah, it, it got to me. Once I had a nice amount, I crafted myself a pickaxe and a sword before heading back down to find some mithril. I spent a fair bit of time mindlessly digging away, but eventually I was set with a pickaxe and an anvil, which was sure to come in handy later on. Now, if you thought that was long, you'd be right. But then I decided, hey, I've already wasted seven hours of my life. Why not go the full send and spend another looking for titanium? Oh, that'll be a good laugh. So I head back down into the caves and mine titanium. I mine titanium mine some titanium, died, drop back in, mine titanium, and then you guessed it, I, I mine stone. No, I, I mine titanium. 
But after a while, I had a full set of tools, a sword, armor, and I was basically considering ending it all, to be honest. But I pushed on and head over to the beautiful Hallow Biome. Why? Well, because I needed some souls of light. To tackle my first hard mode boss, I was going to need these souls. So I got to work farming mobs and collecting everything that I needed. I planned on collecting enough so that I could spawn a few Hallow Mimics and I could try to obtain this really hidden gem of a weapon that no one really uses. What was this weapon? Well, it was a little underground bow called the Daedalus Storm Bow. Yeah, you might have heard of it. I head back home and spawn in a Hallow Mimic, but I didn't actually end up getting the weapon I wanted, which was just great. I head back down to farm a few more souls and I eventually came out with a fair few. So I head back up to the base to start farming the mimics. My first fight wasn't as lucky and I didn't get the bow again, but the second round was a lot better and there it was. I then used the rest of my keys to gather up a few more great healing potions because I was sure I was going to need them. Then I went down and gathered iron, souls of night and vertebrae. These were the materials that I needed for the mechanical worm and I decided it'd probably be a good idea to craft as many as I could just in case the impossible happened and I didn't beat him first try. Eventually it was night and it was time to take on the boss. I spawned him in and started picking away at his health with my weapons, however, it didn't go very well. After getting him down to around half health, I messed up and he was able to kill me. Me? The, the world's greatest Terraria player? <laughs> I was outraged. So logically, I went and respawned him back in. Only for the exact same f***ing thing to happen again. I took a couple minutes to sit back and reevaluate my strategy. I was running in and taking way too much damage, so I realised I needed to play it a little safer. I took in a deep breath and spawned him in for the third time. This attempt, I took my time and focused properly, and it paid off. I defeated the destroyer and I was rewarded with some new shiny stuff, which was absolutely magnificent. Now, if there was one thing that I took out of that fight, it was, holy s***, I am slow. I knew I needed to improve my mobility, and to do that, I planned on acquiring some wings. Now, this was during my 10th hour of playing and my brain was more fried than a bucket of KFC. So I first decided I wanted to head over to the jungle and build a little shelter for the witch doctor to move in so that I could buy some leaf wings. But me being the f***ing idiot that I am, I forgot that from the 1.4 update, I wasn't even able to buy these wings yet. So I built this beautiful little house for essentially no reason. I head back to the base, equipped a gravitational potion and shot up for the sky island. Here, I planned on farming some souls of light, which are a common crafting ingredient in most wings. Now, I don't know if I was tripping but fighting these wyverns was really f***ing hard. It took me a long time to just sit around and fight them before I finally had enough souls to craft a pair of wings. And when I did, I went with a lovely pair of angel wings and pfft. I mean, don't they look f***ing beautiful? But yeah, once I equipped them, I definitely felt more mobile and I really liked my chances of winning the next boss fight. Now, you might be asking, James, what is the next boss fight? That's what you sound like, by the way. Well, for most players, myself included, it's common to face Skeletron Prime next. But before I could do that, there was a couple steps of preparation that I needed to do. The first major one was to acquire a new ranged weapon, because running in like a f***ing idiot and swinging my weapon around didn't seem to work too well. So I planned on obtaining the good old Mega Shark. I visited my best friend and on and off again boyfriend, the arms dealer. He sold me a mini shark and some illegal gun parts, because Big Jim Bowl does not follow the law. I then ran over to the ocean in search of some sharks. Turns out, sharks are f***ing impossible to find. You'd think in an ocean that's essentially the size of a large puddle, I'd be able to find some pretty quickly, but no. It actually took me a good 30 minutes killing everything I saw before I finally had the 5 shark fins I needed to craft the weapon. Then I head home and did just that, even getting the strong modified because I'm just that much of a goat. To test out my new toy, I head back down into hell and respawn the wall of flesh. I was expecting big things from this gun and pff, boy did it deliver. I ripped him apart within a couple minutes and I didn't even break a sweat. Now, clearly this gun was pretty good, but you know what makes a gun better? Crystal balls. I head over to the underground hallowed and mine up some crystal shards for a while. Once I had enough, I crafted them into crystal bullets and tried it out on the Eye of Cthulhu. Because why not? Bro didn't even stand a chance. Oh, and I got a cool hat that wobbles around, so yeah, I guess I guess that's something. While I was walking about, I got a message saying that the pirates were invading. I didn't really care, you know, I was enjoying my new hat, chilling out. I guess you could say I was hooked. <laughs> Uh, I hate myself. But before I had time to think, there they were. Now, I won't lie to you, I had a bit of a nightmare trying to defeat these. They proved rather difficult, but it didn't take too long before I had a little hiding spot and I could take them out. Once they were done with, I made my way over to the underground crimson. There's a weapon in Terraria that's essentially a glorified p square, the golden shower. It drops enemies' defense by a whopping 15 points, so I thought, I, I definitely need one of them. I flew around killing countless Ico when they spawned in, and eventually I had more than enough, so I'd head back home and crafted the weapon. Like I said, I next planned on killing Skeletor on Prime, so I had to grab everything I needed to spawn him in. One of these materials was iron, so I strolled through the caves and mined up every bit I saw. And while doing this, I finally found myself a magic mirror. Yeah, it actually took me 12 hours of playing before I could get one. 
hideous. Finally, to craft the mechanical skull, there was one more item that I needed, bones. And where do you get bones? Well, in the f***ing dungeon. Of course you do. Now, I won't lie to you, I was shaking. My knees, they, they were trembling. The thought of going back into that place was actually really daunting because every time I went back, I ended up dead or with depression. But I jumped in and started killing all the skeletons I saw. I also looked around for a mirror master because I was going to need it to upgrade my sword, but I didn't come up lucky. So I went home, crafted the skulls and had a little nap to skip tonight. A couple minutes had passed and it was Skeletron Prime time. I stuck to the method I'd planned out of keeping my distance and shooting him with the Mega Shark. I also switched to the Golden Shower to weaken his defense and this worked like a dream. And after a few minutes of fighting, I was able to take him out, but I wasn't satisfied. I am the Lord of Alter Area players, so I spawned him back in and farmed him a few more times. Using the strategy I'd planned out, this was a piece of cake and by the end of the night, I had more than enough Hallow Bars. I was essentially Terraria's answer to Elon Musk except I'm broke as shit. Now I noticed that this absolute eyesore of a house was starting to get a little cramped, so I extended it. I was looking for the steampunker NPC to move in, as I was going to need her before I could fight the twins. She could sell me the Blendomatic, which is used to create asphalt blocks. This special item allows the player to run really fast, and I was sure I was going to need it before I could take on the twins. Not much time had passed before she arrived, and I could finally start the hunt for slime. Now there isn't much entertainment to be had in showing you a compilation of me killing slimes, and there definitely was not much entertainment in doing it. But eventually I collected enough and I could start bridging across the side of my arena. Took a very long time. Now that my arena was ready, it was time to buff up and spawn in the twins. The fight began and straight away I noticed that keeping my distance with the asphalt was an absolute lifesaver. I was actually expecting this fight to be a little tricky, but without too much effort I was able to take them both out. And because it was so easy, I did it three more times. <laughs> I got my loot, crafted a brand new sword, and went down to mine some Chlorify. Now, I didn't think that this mining speed was going to take much longer than the one for Titanium, but I was so wrong. I spent a lot of time down here, and it felt like I was barely making any progress. And then to top it off, I went to open a chest, only to realise that it was a trap. <laughs> if we could just forget that ever happened, that would, that would be fantastic, thank you. I made my way back down there to finish off my mining spree and collect some more life fruit. Once I got home, I was greeted with the Blood Moon, which is exactly what I wanted. I fought off some of the mobs for fun, but I did lose a couple guests along the way. Although I wasn't too bothered because eventually they just spawned back in anyways. Still waiting for my grand though. Eventually the sun rose and I head over to the edge of the world to create an arena for my next boss fight. Now if you can't guess what it might be, then wow and I thought I was f***ing stupid. Duke Fishron is a boss that isn't actually essential for progression, but he dropped some really good loot. But to spawn him in, I was first going to need some truffle worms. So I went down and dug an area for them to spawn in before collecting a couple and then returning home. Now, the next logical step would be to head back to the ocean and fight Duke Fishron. I'm not that predictable. So I went to fight the Queen Slime instead. This fight was more for fun and it really didn't present much of a challenge. But I did get a cool slime mount, so I guess that's something. Anyways, off I went to the ocean and started fishing to summon Duke Fishron. He spawned in and so the battle began. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, this was pretty hard. My first fight with him ended up with me being split into about six pieces, which wasn't exactly ideal. However, on my second attempt, I was a little luckier. I defeated him and was rewarded with a razor blade typhoon and a pair of his wings. So I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna fight him again. I did this a couple more times and I got two flare-ons, which I mean, can't complain about that. So far, my success rate with bosses had been pretty good, but I knew I could benefit from a couple of upgrades. I was still wearing titanium armor, and after a little bit of googling, I decided I'd be better off with a hallowed set. So I went to my trusty anvil and crafted a pair of greaves, a plate mail and a mask. Much better. I also upgraded my sword to a true Excalibur, which was nice, but I, I wanted more. So I planned on starting the grind for the Terror Blade. To craft this sword, you needed the weapon I'd just made and the True Knight's Edge, but it turns out I didn't have one of those. So I went to the dungeon once again to finally try and get myself a Muramasa. Now, even though I felt like I'd spend more than enough time here, I still hadn't explored it all yet. There were so many hidden rooms behind those stupid crumbling bricks, so I knew this was going to take some time. I was losing a considerable amount of brain cells by the minute, looking in every chest I saw, hoping that I would get the sword I needed. Oh, is there even a Muramasa in this world? Well, it turned out, yeah, yeah, there was. Finally, I opened the chest and lo and behold, there was that beautiful big blue long sword. I went back to the base and equipped the rest of the materials that I needed before I could finally craft the Knight's Edge. And then I tried turning it into the true Knight's Edge, but it turns out I had no souls. I farmed a couple bosses to get what I needed and then thank god for that. Before I acquired the terror blade, I decided to go down into the underground jungle and look for a plantera bulb. Being the pro high IQ terraria player that I am, I forgot to build an underground jungle farm, so I spent ages running around like an idiot looking for one. But once I did find one, 20 f***ing minutes later, I dug out a space and built some platforms ready to take on the next boss. Now, I don't know if I was scared or what, but I decided to procrastinate a little bit first. I extended my shack and if it looked bad before, this definitely did not help. But I got a couple new guests, so I guess it was a worthy investment. I really wanted to have 
upgrade my sword into the Terror Blade. So I slept for a while waiting for the solar eclipse to happen. This took a really long time, but eventually it started. I fought through them in hopes of finding a broken hero sword. These dropped from Mothron, but uh, there was no Mothrons. Turns out I needed to defeat Plantera first, so this was essentially a big waste of time. Actually, no, it wasn't a waste of time because I got a new pet. A flying eyeball that looks kind of like sperm. He needed a name and I came up with Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, what a guy. Why, why do you fly like that? Anyways, it was finally time to stop messing about and start the fight with Plantera. I head back into the arena and once I was ready, I broke the ball. She came over looking menacing as ever and yeah, f*** me, this was easy. Yeah. So I went on and I fought her again. Now, little did I know that when I spawned her in for the second time, I was about to have the most chaotic few minutes of the whole playthrough. She arrived and as I was killing her, the solar eclipse happened for the second time in a row. I finished her off and raced back up to the base praying to get a broken hero sword. This time there were more friends. I killed a couple and finally I got the last crafting material. Thank f*** for that. I could finally get myself the Terror Blade. I got my materials together and... Are you f***ing kidding me? But who cares, I finally had a Terror Blade. I tested it out on some mobs and oh my god did it deliver. And so I used it for the rest of the day killing every mob I saw trying to get a bit more money. I then head into the jungle temple for the very first time. I opened the door, ventured through and finally found the golem room. I cleared up all the traps lying on the floor because they were really starting to annoy me. And then spawned him in and began the battle. Now if you don't know, golem is essentially a big fat meme. Th this guy is harmless. Huh? I flew around a little and hit him with my weapons and before I knew it he was defeated. And of course, I did it again. Now, I had two options. I could progress on and finish the end game, or I could take some time to upgrade my gear and weapons. And obviously I did the latter because the gear I had was pretty sh**. So my first plan of action was to head over to the edge of the world and search for a UFO. The Martian invasion had a couple of useful items that I wanted, such as the influx waiver and the UFO mount. Finally, I found one and soon after, the Martians started invading. I started fighting them off and collecting all the loot that I could get my hands on. I would say that this fight went pretty well, but I'd be completely lying. Yeah, it was a little rough. I did get myself a UFO mount though, which I was very happy about. But unfortunately, there wasn't any influx waivers to be seen. Now, I didn't want to go straight back into fighting them again. So I thought, f*** it, why not fight the Frost Legion? Because you get a big fat f*** off from that. So yeah, let's do it. So soon they arrived and... Yeah, this was probably the most boring fight I had. Now, as I mentioned, I was in desperate need of some new gear. Mine was good, but if I was going to fight the Moon Lord, then I knew I wouldn't stand the chance. But I didn't actually know what I needed. So I went over to Google and I did a little research. The first thing I needed to change was my armor. The Beetle armor is arguably the strongest melee set before the end game. So I began the long grind of acquiring it. And first off, I needed three turtle shells. Turtle shells are a material that are dropped by tortoises. Wait, wait a minute. Turtle shells are dropped by tortoises. I, I don't think know. But I head over to the jungle and I started looking for them. Now, I didn't expect to get all three very quickly, but this took f***ing forever. I probably spent at least 30 minutes running side to side in the jungle, hoping that they would drop them. It, it fully pushed me to the edge. Okay, that's one. Number two. Oh, thank f*** for that. So I went home and crafted turtle armor, then beetle armor, and that was the first thing crossed off my list. Item number two was the warrior emblem. Now I killed a wall of flesh a good few times, but I still hadn't come across this accessory. So I dropped back into hell to try and find myself a voodoo doll. Now you'd think that after the long grind for turtle shells, the terraria gods would look down at me, feel sympathy, and make it pretty easy. But no, they did not. The process of running back and forwards through hell took a long time. And I mean like a very long time. I probably spent over an hour doing this. This was by far the most painful part of the whole challenge. And I lost so many brain cells, it was unbelievable. I saw red devil after red devil after red f***ing devil. But eventually there it was. A guide view you doll. Jesus Christ. I yunked it from him with Riz. And then spawned in the wall of flesh. He approached and I started attacking him. Did I get it? You might be wondering. Yeah, yeah I did. Yes! I head back home and crafted a celestial stone and an Avengers emblem. I also made a power glove and then upgraded it to a mechanical glove. I then turned my celestial stone into a shell and crafted an obsidian shield. Although this was a big waste of time because I didn't even end up using it. I then reforced all my gear to get relatively decent modifiers and I was finally set. Now although my last fight to the Martians went pretty well. 
I still needed the influx waiver, so I head back to the little area I made and stood about looking for a UFO until I finally found one. They approached and I started taking them out. This was definitely a good way to test out my new gear and I felt a lot better. Unfortunately though, it came to an end and I didn't get the sword, so I spawned them again. I continued to fight them for a long time and as the event was about to end, I clutched up and I got myself the influx waiver. Now if that isn't a top 10 coldest moments then I don't know what is. I finally had everything I needed so I ran over to the dungeon to start the end game. I killed the freaks worshipping a coin and the lunatic cultists spawned in. Thanks to my new equipment, and UFO, this fight was relatively easy and it didn't take long before I defeated him and could start fighting the four pillars. I started off with the nebula pillar, then the stardust one and finished off with the solar pillar. But before I finished the final pillar and fought the moon lord, I had a couple steps of preparation to do. First off, I wanted to craft a solar eruption, because it's what everyone uses to defeat the moon lord. And I also made a stardust dragon for a bit of extra damage, but I forgot to give him a name, so if you have any ideas then leave a comment down below. I reforged the solar eruption hoping for a bit of extra damage, but I had an absolute stinker. So in a desperate effort to make it somewhat useful, I sold all my Clorify and Hello Bars for a bit of money before I could continue reforging it. It did pay off though because I ended up getting the Godly Modifier. I then gathered up some honey and made a little box arena to help me with the Moon Lord fight. I thought this would work but you'll see. I then ran over to finish off the Vortex filler and start the final fight. But yeah, I defeated the final pillar and impending doom started approaching. I ran over to the box, buffed up, and there the Moon Lord was. Now I had high hopes for this fight, and I thought all my new gear and armor would help me win. But uh, spoiler alert, I, I f***ed it. I brought his health down a considerable amount, and as his heart opened up, I panicked. The honey I placed down was essentially doing a big fat f*** ball because I didn't even place enough. So I ran out into the open, and a few seconds later, he was able to take me out. Clearly, the strategy I had was pretty dog and I needed to rethink everything. I wanted to create a new structure with an actual working honey pool, get better accessories, and maybe even put the dryer there to help me out. I did notice that my weapon was doing well enough during the fight so I put my focus on increasing my defense. I first head over to the dungeon in search for a paladin shield. As I was digging out a huge area for them to spawn in, I fought one on his own and I got lucky and it dropped it. Now it was all good having that in my arsenal but there was a couple more things that I wanted. The first thing was a charm of myths, which is an accessory that reduces the potion sickness debuff and slowly regenerates health. To craft it I needed a philosopher's stone and a band of regeneration, but I had both of these lying about anyway so it wasn't too hard. The other three accessories I equipped with the mechanical glove, the warrior emblem and the avenger emblem. So, I was setting that department, but my arena was f***ing hopeless. I tore it down and started working on a better design that wouldn't get me annihilated so easily. I linked up a heart statue I found while mining, created a pool of honey that actually f***ing did something, and even moved the dryer below me, just in case I needed a special ability. The final thing I needed to do was get walled in and all of my accessories. I began through and tried to get it on everything, but I ran out of money very quickly. So I got some materials together and started farming the destroyer, until I had enough hollow bars to sell and make some more money. Then I could finish off reforging everything, getting ward in on every item and I was feeling stacked ready for the rematch. I grabbed all the buffs I had and crafted a celestial sigil before heading over to my new and improved arena ready for the fight. I geared up, spawned him in and there he was, hoping that this time I'd be a little more successful. My armour clutched up for me as my health was barely going down and my solar eruption made quick work of everything. I essentially sat there firing away at him taking as much health as I could until eventually... Finally, after 22 hours of playing, I completely beat in the game and I could not be happier. I got myself a nice meow mate and I was going over the moon. I mean, I was going f***ing crazy. Jeez, l l let's go. But, hang on a minute, this was hour 22 and I still had two hours left. So what did I do? Well, first I decided I wanted to max out my armour and get a pair of wings. I head back over to the dungeon and restarted the process, speeding through the cultist and the pillars a few times so I could craft a load of celestial skills. Once I'd done this, I made my way back over to the arena and started farming the moon lord. In total, I think I killed him eight times and I definitely had the loot to prove it. Really, I had to do this because I was after the Star Wrath, which was one of the last ingredients I needed to complete my next objective. I sold off a lot of the Moon Lord drops for money and then crafted myself a full set of solar armor. And I also crafted this thing, which I don't know what it does, but looks cool, eh? Now, if you haven't guessed, the next thing that I wanted to do was to obtain the Zenith. This sword is essentially a cluster of all the other swords and mate, it is unreal. Luckily for me, I only had one sword left to obtain and that was the Horseman's Blade. This weapon is a drop from Pumpkin, which spawns during the Pumpkin Moon event. To spawn this in, I first needed to do a little gardening, so I went and placed pumpkin seeds all around the base waiting for them to grow. Next, I went over to the dungeon and was in search for ectoplasm. I ran around and farmed countless mobs until eventually I had the amount that I was looking for. Finally, I had a little nap and then spawned in the destroyer for a couple of hollow bars. I then crafted the medallions and started my first wave of the pumpkin moon. Now, the first few rounds of this event were relatively easy and my armor definitely helped me to stay alive. I was targeting the morning wood and killing everyone I saw to try and pass through the rounds quickly. Morning wood. 
seriously. A few minutes passed and finally the first pumpkin spawned in. Using my UFO and solar eruption, this mini boss stood no chance, which was pretty good because I was going to have to kill a lot of these to get the sword I was after. I killed pumpkin after pumpkin after pumpkin, but I still ended up empty handed. The event then came to an end and I wasn't feeling too good about it. So I slept and waited to redo the process for a second time. They arrived and I was praying, please let me get this sword. And I didn't get it. But I did get a robot outfit, which, <laughs> yeah, that was cool. So once again, I slept, respawned them in, fought away, and just as I thought my luck couldn't get any worse, oh, fucking thank God for that. Now, I had every single sword I needed, and I could go on to, wait, oh, fuck, I think I'm missing something. Now I had every single sword and I could go on to crafting the zenith. And I mean, as you can see, I was I was pretty happy. I started reforging all my equipment to try and get the best modifiers on everything that I could get. I got good wings, a legendary zenith, the lot. But I thought, what's the use of having it all if I can't even test it? So I planned to do two more things before my 24 hours were up. They were to fight the Old One's army and the Empress of Light. I bought the stuff I needed from the tavern keep, did a little bit of landscaping, and then spawned in the Old One's army. Now I'd love to make a compilation of me doing this, but it just is not worth watching. Now that they were done with and I completed it, it was time to fight the Empress of Light. And because I'm a it, I just did it at night. I, I didn't want to do it during the day. I went over to the Hallow Biome and started looking for a Prismatic Lacewing before killing it and starting my final fight in Terraria. This was it. All my preparation, all the blood, sweat, tears, the misery, the hard work, everything for this final huge important fight. Yeah, it was, it was pretty easy. But there we go, finally I completed it. That was my journey of playing Terraria for 24 hours straight. Was it worth it? Uh, no, no, it was not. But anyways, I'm going to go touch grass, rethink my life, and yeah, see you all in a bit.